came to the house of the Lord, what a better place to be. Amen. And the children and the young people of the Stokeham all stand up here and you can be seated.
Secondly, we must acknowledge him as our father, our creator, life giver, the establisher of the boundaries of our habitation, which of course places us, when we say he's our father, our father, we are also putting ourselves in our right place, right? Amen. Which is a son or daughter of God. We're putting ourselves in, in a subservient place that we live based upon his pleasure. Yes. We're only here because he said we could be. Come on now. And what this also does, and this is so important, I want to slow down and make sure you get it. Our in the body. Father puts us in our right place, which is a relationship which allows our prayers to be relationship-based prayer and not what we called them last week. Ain't everybody kind of didn't like it? Santa Claus prayers. Where we thank God is we hop up on his lap and give him our list and we pray. I, as I'm learning this, I'm finding out I left the Lord disappointed a lot of times. Because I showed up, I threw a couple of thank you, hallelujahs, and praise the Lord's in it. And then I said, now let's get down to business. Here's what I need. I need this, I need this. And it was all legitimate stuff. I, I never had prayed for the Lord to give me a brand new four-wheel drive pickup truck. I mean, I, I've never prayed for the Lord to give me a, a, you know, a mansion with 15 bathrooms in it or nothing like that. Everything we pray about is generally sincere. That's all we see the Lord as, is our need meter. And so, these prayers, kingdom prayers, are relationship prayers, rather than need-based prayers. And relationship prayer means, I want to be with you. And we find out he wants to be with us. Now, I, I want to ask you something right now. Maybe you want to write it down in your handout, if you took one. Let's move on to the third thing we're supposed to pray. Oh, here's what I was going to say. <laughs> if what I'm teaching ticks you off a little bit, good. Good. Because it's true. Sister Leanne, when I'm going through this and studying it, preparing for it, writing out my notes, writing out the handout, Brother David, I am like, what in the world? I didn't even really, I feel the Holy Spirit. I didn't really get this relationship on that for a long time. I really thought it was this simple. I'll be good. He'll give me everything I need. I'll be good. And my life will be perfect. It never worked like that. It never was meant to be worked. Matter of fact, I, I've had a scripture that has been, and it's not in my notes, but you think about it. We are actually called to be partakers of his suffering. Somebody said it. We're called to be partakers of his suffering. You, you're not doing a Sunday school drive like that. Come go to my church and you can suffer. <laughs> that's been around this long or a day or two can declare when you start getting things right with the Lord and you start making steps to do things right with the Lord the devil is not just going to step back and say go ahead but there's going to be some opposition and all of it don't come from the devil some, come, some of it comes from the Lord because it's the pressure of his hands on us uh, making us into what he wants us to be in the body. Father, right relationship with him. And the third thing we ought to pray in kingdom prayers is thy kingdom come. And the reason is, that is the first request in the Lord's prayer. Thy kingdom come. Because the kingdom has to come first. Because you see, when the kingdom is in, in operating as it's supposed to be, that's when you have order. 
And I, I don't really want to cause no trouble, and I don't want to make no, nobody too mad, but I want to tell you right now, a whole lot of folks living their lives out of order, and you want to try to find some way for God to bless you living in that mess. Ain't happening. You can't wait him out. You're not more stubborn than him. He will not violate who he is to make you happy. Or me happy. Kingdom. The kingdom must come first. It's got to come before repentance. It's got to come before forgiving somebody else. It's got to come before deliverance for temptation or evil. Recognizing the priority of the kingdom allows all other prayers to be placed where they belong. Abraham, this I'm still in review from last week. Abraham was well into the New Testament called the friend of God, James 2 and 23. Jesus taught us, how does he know we love him? How does the Lord know we love him? Do what he says. Very simple. If you love me, keep my commandments. When we love him and obey him, this allows him to talk to us in a different way than folks who don't obey him. Because he starts talking to us like what? Friends. Very good. You remember that from last week. He said, there's a different way I talk to friends than I do servants. Or slaves is what the word really means. People that are here because they really don't want to be here, but they got to be here. There's a relationship we're going to get in Jesus Christ where I'm here because I want to be here. Then nobody make me come here. Then nobody give me to come here. I ain't here because I want to do something for me. I'm here because I love you. I'm here because he blesses me. I'm here because he keeps me. I'm here because I trust him. Friends, the picture that he wants us to get is one of him sharing his desires with us. His desire, his will for the world in which we live, which we are built to affect for the kingdom. You got it in you. Can, can I tell you it's in you? The ability to affect your world for the benefit of the kingdom of God, you already got it. He wants to share his desire and his will for the world in which we live and can affect. Which for the body of Christ, our effectiveness, our ability to affect is worldwide. Amen? Amen. Amen. You don't believe me, start praying for a missionary in Africa. Start praying for a missionary in Europe or Asia and watch God work. But you can't do it if you're all wrapped up in you. So in effect, prayer, if you remember, this is how we closed last week. When I go to prayer, the Lord and I are getting together for a strategy session where he's going to tell me what he wants me to do, give me the power to go and do it, and I'm going to make sure I'm in the place where I can do that, and I'm doing it for the right reason. My motivation is right. So tonight we're going to learn how we position ourselves to be that. For God and his kingdom. We're going to talk about fasting tonight. And I will tell you, my least favorite subject in the Bible. I would rather teach on why submit yourself to your husband than I would fast. Don't tell me I'm looking at me. I eat for fun. I don't eat because I'm hungry. I eat because I like to. So, and it's now I know you are thinking, oh, here we go. You're gonna call us to no, 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 no. This is gonna blow your mind. Fasting. At its very simplest form, it means abstaining from food. Now there are other things that one can abstain from, either along with fasting from food or perhaps as an occasional or necessary alternative. One thing the Bible specifically says, I want y'all, all of you people that got baptized ears to, to plug. But one thing the Bible specifically talks about 
as, a, as something to abstain from because you fast is having sex. It does. So that tells us right there that there are other things besides just not. <laughs> oh, God, you think it's so sexy. <laughs> That that should only be done temporarily, but it's also very clear that you can only fast from sex if you're married. That's right. Because if you ain't married, you can't be doing that. And that ain't cost you nothing. That ain't cost you nothing. Now, I don't know what Bible you're reading that says that think you can get away with it or the Lord moved the standard. He says right very quick, plain, and in a hurry, you got to be married to be doing that stuff.
And somebody brought water and heated it up on the stove. You didn't want you didn't want to be the last dude in the cellar. He's taking a bath in his soup. So they didn't take baths all the time. So when they fasted, they didn't practice good hygiene. Come on. Because why? They wanted everybody to notice. That's why Jesus, when he thought about fasting and praying and giving, he said, live normally. Do it normally. Get up, get dressed, comb your hair, wash your face. Make no effort to broadcast your acts of supplication. Now, if, if you go to your mama's house on your fast day and she's got a big old platter of fried chicken, you got one of two options. Come on. Tell her you fasted, or tell the Lord you get him tomorrow. <laughs> I have done it too. <laughs> now, the prophet Isaiah, way back in the old covenant, I, mean, I know we've laughed a little bit, but now we're going to get down to business. I'm really setting you all up. Prophet Isaiah offered a new covenant glimpse into an old covenant practice. Because everything from the old covenant was pointing toward the new covenant. You got that, right? Mm -hmm. Now the Lord spoke to the prophet in Isaiah 58. Now I'm going to give you a fair warning. I'm going to bounce back between the King James and the New Living throughout this passage a little bit. Okay? Because I want you to be able to really clearly see and understand some things. Woo! Good, 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 good. Cry aloud, he says to the prophet. Don't hold back. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Everybody say transgression. Transgression. Sins. Sins. Ain't good things. Okay, never not something you get a prize for. Okay? Now, so he comes to the prophet Isaiah and says, You go and you preach with authority and you preach loud and you straighten my people up with the word, get them away from their transgressions and their sins. Now throw verse 2 up there. Look here. They see me daily. They delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness, they, they do the ordinances of God. They ask me of the ordinances of justice, which means right behavior, fair behavior. They pray about it. They take delight in approaching to God. Now, I don't know about you all, but I'm telling you right now, verse 1 and verse 2 don't go together. Right? He said, go and get these people transgression and sin and do it loud. And do it plain and preach to them and straighten them up. And this is how he introduces them. They see me daily. Mm -hmm. You ought to be nervous right now because it's about to get right up in here. Right. They see me daily, means they pray all the time. They get pleasure from knowing my ways. They forsake not the ordinances of God, they follow the rules. They pray and ask me how to behave justly, fairly, and they take the light in approaching God. I, I'm thinking right now, there's a good chance for the first time in the history of the universe, the Lord got his wires crossed. Uh -huh. And he, told, he was telling Isaiah to go talk to some bad people, and Isaiah messed up and started talking to the good ones. Right? Hmm. No, the Lord didn't mess up. Look here. I, I want to be like verse 2. I want to be like that. that it, I wish the Lord said that stuff about me. But look here. In the New Living Translation, look at verse 3. Somebody's going to get an answer you're looking for from God right now. Here's what they say. They told the Lord this. We have fasted before you. Why aren't you impressed? Uh -oh. 
Now, I want us to be real right now. That's kind of how we talk. I've been watching the clock. I already got 13 and a half hours down. Only 10 and a half to go. Man, this is a sacrifice. I hope he's noticing. Thank you. 
Why am I doing this? Well, I want something from God. And they told me if I fasted and prayed, I'd get something from God. Bless God. It ain't working out so good. Can I get a witness? It ain't working out so good. Let's go back to the King James Version for verse number six. I'm going to be a little transparent in this one with my own struggle. Here's what the Lord says in 58 and 6 in the King James. He said, is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. Somebody ought to hear that right now. We get so top picking scared. I preached about it the other day. Scared of the news. Scared of all them bad kids. Scared of all them people that don't love the Lord. Scared of all the wickedness in the world. And he said, this is a fast I've chosen. To loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. Now, I got to be transparent. Come on. I have thought my whole life that that was talking about my bands of wickedness, Come on. my heavy burdens, my oppression, yeah. and my yoke. Come on now. I thought it was always about something I'm getting done for me. Yeah. The reason I'm not getting this done is because I ain't praying enough. I ain't fasting enough. Yeah. I ain't giving enough. I ain't doing enough. Is anybody hearing this preacher right now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a picture of the religious world as a whole. I thought this was me. He said, matter of fact, Sister Dana, I would get excited when I read this. Oh, boy, if I fast, all this is going to happen in my life. But then I fasted, Brother Danny, and it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, then guess what? Since I'm living, I feel Jesus right now. Since I'm living on the performance spectrum, Come on. I got to work harder, yeah. or I ain't never going to be good enough. Hey. Deuces. Uh, Is that right? Like that 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 what you did to me? Deuces. Uh -oh. When I think, Sister Maria, when I come to the conclusion, I just can't be good enough to get anything from God. He don't love me like he loves all these other people. Uh -huh. So I'm going to hit the road. Come on. I might as well have some fun. <laughs> and the problem was always a motivation problem. Why am I doing this? Well, I want something. <laughs> so you kind of, we didn't even really hide it too much. Yeah. What are you doing? I want fast. What are? I want something from God. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, 
and that, get this, this is the real deal, Lucille, that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. You know what that means? Your own relatives who need your help. That's what it means. Now, before anybody starts twisting this, if you're in the spirit, the help you give is true help. Not help that makes you feel better and get noticed. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Y'all ready for this? I don't know if y'all ready for this or not. This is the W-O-R-D of God. Look what it says. And thy hell shall spring forth speedily. Oh, yes. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. But you need to turn to your neighbor right now and say, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. Except this. Except this. Yeah. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. That's it. Okay. Only thing is, is it corrected the word. It doesn't say reward. It says read. Reward. And you know what it means? The glory of the Lord has got my back. Look here. God uses me to help others. That's six and seven. Six is I'm fasting to get things done in the spiritual realm. Seven is I'm fasting to be able to do things in the natural realm. Y'all hear it? And eight And your light shines. It breaks forth just like the morning sun coming out of the dawn that's dark. And your help. I think it's what the book says. The key, you want to know why so many people are not getting the victory over your own health struggles? It's because that's all you think about is your own health struggles. Sister Stephanie, when you start reaching out to other people, God starts reaching out to you. I think that's how it happens, isn't it? True story. Okay? Look here. God uses me to help others, and when I help others, my healing comes. The righteousness which is of God goes before me, and it's only righteous as I am submitted to him. I have no right. Mm, I have no righteousness of my own. None. Not even praying, fasting, giving, coming to church. None of those things make me righteous. None. I am only made righteous hey, by God. the blood of Jesus Christ. shall be my rear guard. That's what it says in the other translation. You know what that is? That's enemies that try to sneak up on you. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh, it gets better. And you know what the main most enemy that tries to sneak up on me when I'm doing the will of God is? Coming from behind me. Uh, my what, Sister Ashley? Talk about it. My past. Jesus. It says the glory of the Lord stands before me. The glory of the Lord stands behind me.
You know what happens when my light breaks forth in the morning? What breaks forth with him in the morning? Do you remember? Huh? Does anybody remember? This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. His compassions fail not. What's it say, Brother Billy? They are new every morning. Every morning. You know what's happening when my light breaks forth? I've been praying kingdom prayers. And it ain't me that's shining, baby. It's who I'm with that's shining. I'm in relationship with the Lord. And I'm coming with new compassion. And I'm coming with new mercy. And I'm coming with new grace. And I'm coming with new power. And I'm coming. And I'm not coming by myself. Oh, God. Book for me. I stand upon the word of God. 
about the B-I-B-L-E. The King James Version says, then you'll be known as the repairer of the breach, <laughs> the restorer of paths to dwell in. You. Fasting is designed to set us free from it's all about me. Because as I crucify this flesh, he increases. The process by which we are changed from our image into the image of God, which is called formation, this is the process, in fact, when we return to God's created purpose for us. Now, anybody remember? Cain brought an offering, what the Bible says. Abel brought the first fruits of his flock and the fat thereof, which means Cain brought an offering. It might have been good. It might have been bad. It was probably, he took his basket out there, get a couple cucumbers, get a couple tomatoes, get a couple squash. That's the way I read it, Brother David. The Bible does not say there was anything special. He just brought an offering. Come on. But it says that Abel brought the best of the best of his pie. Right. And the Lord had respect unto Abel's offering, but he didn't accept Cain's offering. But then he came back to give Cain a second chance. I love it. And said, hey, Hoss, why are you going to run for it? What's the problem? If you would do what you're supposed to do, you're going to be accepted too. That's what the book says. He said, but I want you to know that where you are right now is a safe place. But if you step outside of this safe place, the enemy, a wild animal, a beast, they're ready couching at the door of the Bible. Come on now. Cain didn't get the Lord's message. He got ticked off at the preacher. He got ticked off at the Lord. He got ticked off at everybody. And the only person he could take it out on was his brother. Come on. So he got up in the field, <laughs> picked a fight, rose up, killed him. Killed him. Because Abel did the right thing. And it made him jealous. And instead of elevating himself, he decided to get rid of the competition. Huh? Jesus. The Lord didn't like it. And the blood of Abel cried out to the Lord from the ground. You read that in the book too. So the Lord came to Cain and said, Hey, where's your brother? Can you say that with me right now? Where's your brother? <laughs> Cain said, You're asking me for him. What you asking me for? All I can tell you, you know where Cain is. Why are you coming to me about Abel? I got this. I got mine. Am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he's at. It's a lie to God. I don't know where he's at. Am I my brother's keeper? What an idiot. <laughs> He's face to face with the Lord God Almighty, the creator of the world. He's trying to keep on running a hustle. Is not this the evidence of sinful selfishness in action? Yes, you're your brother's keeper. Yes, you're your brother's keeper. You're certainly not his murderer. Come on. And the words of a murderer are, <coughs> where is that? <laughs> Am I my brother's keeper? Look what our motives are right. When we are in alignment with the body and the Lord. Come on. When we fast and pray, this will become to be less and less of a question. Because you see, our worship, our preaching, our teaching, our ministry of any kind will be based upon the knowledge that I am my brother's keeper. I will put my mind.
mouth on the other members of the body. I will gossip and lie and run people down and bellyache and complain about everything the body's doing that I don't like. You ain't the king, baby. There's only one king that sits on the throne. And I promise you right now, we are trying to be subject to him and to be submitted to him. And he is opening up a whole new world. Everything you do will be with the knowledge that I am my brother's keeper. Can't have the body without it. In conclusion, Brother Little says it perfectly. By turning from their own needs and using their own resources to alleviate the suffering of others, they receive the most precious of rewards. The spiritual discipline of abstaining from one's own pleasures for the gifting of others radically transforms us into the image of the one who calls us. I got to be honest with you. Except I do know how I missed it. Because I like it when it's all about me. I like it when the focus is on me. I like it when the focus is on me good. And I like it when the focus is on me bad. That's what the world will tell you. No such thing as bad publicity. Forget the publicity. you right now, Brother Jerry, you and I have been around this a long time. There's a whole lot of things that he has promised us in that book that we ain't seen. And Brother Larry, the problem ain't with him, and he ain't a liar. But God has been downloading some things into us that are revolutionary for us and for the body. And as we grow in the Lord, we find there's no difference.
like that ain't a big deal. But Brother Shannon, that was in the Bible the whole time. Isaiah 58. Has anybody ever read that passage before and got out of it what we talked tonight? I didn't. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the truth. I didn't. But when it started unloading on me today, I didn't get hurt feelings. I got excited. Yeah. Because, Sister Stephanie, the Lord wants me to be different. He's got a big plan for us, and he's given us what we need to become what he needs us to be. Lord, I love you tonight. I honor you. I praise you. I appreciate you. I glorify you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for everyone that's here. I thank you, God, for the things you're teaching us, the things you're showing us, the things we're believing. I'm thankful for the things we're struggling with. But I tell you, Lord, in my heart, I want to be pleasing to you above everything, above everything. I don't want to be a people pleaser. I want to be a Jesus pleaser. I want to be a king pleaser. I want to serve the kingdom. I want to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And then you promised, then, if I do it right, everything's going to be all right. You will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Sunday morning, back to regular schedule, 10 o'clock is elements. I believe we're in chapter 10, right? Chapter 10, be ready. Elvis.